And joining us now, former Congresswoman Jane Harmon, a longtime member of the Intelligence Committee. Her upcoming book is Insanity Defense, Why Our Failure to Confront Hard National Security Problems Makes Us Less Safe. And a wonderful book it is. Congratulations, Jane. It's really good to see you. Uh, let's talk about one of those intractable problems. It's bedeviled administrations of both parties for decades, for more than half a century. But now we see the culmination, really, of inaction uh, by certainly by the Trump administration for the last four years. And now from the Biden administration, Jane, no ambassador in place, uh, no consul general in Jerusalem, you know, charge d'affaires in our Tel Aviv embassy, well, it was the embassy, a charge d'affaires in our mm -hmm. embassy now in Jerusalem, but no real um, action by the U.S. Well, this is another one of those problems from hell, Andrea, as you know. I, I was there 25 times as a member of Congress, multiple times since. Uh, the sad thing is we can't want peace on the ground more than the parties on the ground want it. And this is, to me, uh, the three-peat. Uh, we, we've had two intifadas before. The second one, ironically, uh, was started, allegedly, by Ariel Sharon when he was uh, the leader of the opposition in Israel. Uh, he later became uh, prime minister, but uh, uh, he later also insisted that Israelis move out of Gaza and gave it, uh, so so to speak, to the Palestinians. And there's been no peace ever since. So, yes, it's intractable. I'd make a couple more points. One is, uh, where did these rockets come from? I'm guessing Iran. Uh, so Iran is a player here in Gaza, malign activity that we're worried about. Secondly, they have much improved guidance systems on them than did rockets uh, 20 years ago, meaning they can hit their targets uh, more easily. The good news for Israel is the Iron Dome system, which many of us in Congress supported over the years, which is uh, stopping 90 percent, but 10 uh, percent aren't being stopped. So what should happen now? Uh, what should happen now is uh, the world should be paying attention, not just the U.S., uh, the U.N. has been asked to intervene. I don't know whether that's going to happen. Yes, I agree that uh, there need to be Biden representatives on the ground. I'm understanding that within two to four weeks, a lot more folks will be named to these posts. And it's a tricky thing to find the right people. So I I'm kind of going there. But what is my bottom line about the U.S.? Uh, I want to applaud Biden for finally having a strategy uh, for his foreign policy. And that strategy includes focusing at home on threats here. And I'm guessing he will focus there, uh, but we won't do this kind of transactional intervention over here and then something over there. Maybe uh, since he has resumed aid to the Palestinians, which Trump cut, cut, cut off, uh, he will be able to do something that eluded Trump, which is to put together uh, a bigger table uh, to negotiate a broader peace in the Middle East generally, including Iran. I see some sound of that. I mean, I'm not Pollyanna. I know it's a tough place and it is the Middle East, but I see some signs that that could possibly happen, again, with the participation of a lot of people who want things to change on the ground. Now, I know that there were violent clashes for quite some time regarding the attempt by Israeli settlers to evict Palestinians from their long-held generations uh, held places in East Jerusalem, which is an undetermined, according to international law, an undetermined area. Right. Israel claims it since 1967, but Jordan certainly has control since 1994 of the area around the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is one of the third holy sites, the third holiest sites in Islam. So that said, despite the clashes uh, that had been going on, when the Israeli police fired into the Al-Aqsa Mosque after evening prayer, during this very holy period uh, toward the end of Ramadan, that did seem to be a spark plug for the escalation. Well, I, I think it's too early to decide who started this, but the eviction of the six families uh, from their homes uh, was also possibly the spark plug. And or uh, it could have been, the tensions have been rising, that the, the Palestinians uh, who, who were not having an election. That was called, uh, cut, uh, called off by Mahmoud Abbas, uh, allegedly because the polls were pretty poor in his, in his uh, favor. Uh, but they claimed that this was because the Israelis weren't letting them vote in East Jerusalem. So I don't know who struck whom, but this tit for tat is very dangerous, especially if we can assume that uh, the Iran is playing a role here. 
And this will become a proxy for a bigger fight. We already have several of those in the Middle East, unless unless tensions die down. And last thing, and you mentioned this, Andrea, elections. Uh, the Israelis don't really have a government. After four tries, they don't have a government. There may be a fifth election. And Bibi has not been asked to form this new government. It's now someone else who's going to try to form it. Uh, the Palestinians uh, aren't a state, but uh, they don't have they're not having an election in the near term. And the Iranians are having an election in June. So you can see all of this playing out, uh, led by folks who think the fight will enable them to get elected. And that is just tragic, thinking that kids and, and, and innocent women in wheelchairs are the pawns in this uh, escalating fight. And so well said. And of course, Hamas really escalated it beyond the point where Israel had to retaliate because Hamas is looking to fill that vacuum of leadership on the Palestinian side. We have to leave it there. Jane Harmon, thank you so much. Again, congratulations on the book, Insanity Defense. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.